A very good evening and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Boulfeth. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Safriya Palace his representative for charity work and youth affairs, chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, who introduced to His Majesty the top three winners of the Heritage Night competition, which is one of the Olympic Committee's largest heritage sports held under the patronage of His Highness Sheikh Nasser. The top three winners are Ahmed Mayouf Al Ramihi, Mansour Ali Al Khaldi and Nawaf Hassan al kabi respectively. His Majesty congratulated them on winning the competition and hailed their outstanding technical levels, wishing them future success. His Majesty the King expressed appreciation for the efforts of His Highness Sheikh Nasser in reinforcing sports and youth fields in the kingdom through holding such events and competitions that aim to promote the principle of patriotism and consolidate the inherent identity of Bahrain. His Majesty also praised the wide participation and large turnout of the competition. His Majesty the King congratulated all the winners of various competitions and expressed thanks and appreciation to the efforts of the organizers, wishing them success. His Majesty affirmed his support to all measures that aim to preserve national heritage. The top three winners expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King's support and expressed thanks to His Highness Sheikh Nasser for his initiative to hold the Heritage Night competition. Ahmed Mayouf al Ramihi and Mansour Ali Al Khaldi recited two poems to His Majesty. الطير والبندق اللي جاء لزومة والهجن ودروع المشاهير ومهار والبيرة اللي حافظين نرسومة والدين ويضة وحشمة الضيف والجار عوايد تورث وتبقى محشومة لها عندنا حشمة وقيمة ومقدار تاريخ من عصر بعيد نرقومة على خطا منهم لنا درع واستار نطلب من الله جعل العزه يدومه مليكنا نرخص له ارواح واعمار حمد سنام المجد موجع خصومه حمد سديد الراي لو صار ما صار يا شيخ يا شيخ ان ينوم سقدومه يا ابو حمد حييت يا فارس الدار اهلا هلا يا عز ربعه وقومه يلي بعشرات التماثيل بيطاء قم يا قلم واكتب من الشعر ما زال زخرف من حروفك كل ما وهبته خط الغلا وانضم من الشعر قيفان نظم البيوت اللي بفكري بدعته أبيات شعر مثل سلكات الأقراء حمر تشيل اللي بفكري بدعته حمر شراريات من نسل بوشان أزي من اللي في خيالي غصبته فيها الصرايم عقد لولو ومرجاء وسومها واسم الخوالد وسمتها درهبتها للي بها الفكر طربان صوب الرفاع ولا في قصرة قصدت حمد اخو نجله رفيع العز والشان العاهل اللي تفتخر له مدحته حمد اخو نجله له العز والشان العاهل اللي تفتخر لا مدحته لك وقفة يا شيخ تهز الابدان شام خراسك للمعالي شهرته ولك نهضة يا عون هذيك لوطان يوم شافت البحرين بتاج بدعته البستها من عزك اليوم تيجان تاج قويا للزعامه صنعته صح البستها من عزك اليوم تيجان تاج قويا للزعامه <تصفيق> صنعته نشهد انك للعطاء صرت عنوان يوم الفقر بسيوف عزك ردعته الطيب طبعك والفا فيك رنان والخير نهجك والكرم ما بخلته والعز ساسك والعطاء منك هتاء والجود عهلك والعهد ما جهلته على ما صار الطيب ارخيت لعنان فوق ذهبي ان المكارم طلقته على ما صار الطيب ارخيت لعنان فوق ذهبي ان المكارم طلقته يا سيدي فعلك ما يبقي برهان دام الوفاء والطيب من جدك ورثه من جدك الفاتح فخر ذيك لزمان ليوم عهدك والوفاء ما خذلته يا الله عسى ياتيك من الرب غفران ويزيد اجرك كل يوم من حكمته يا الله تحفظ من بس ثوب الايمان تحفظ مليك ان الصعايب
His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Safriya Palace Reverend Johnny Moore on the occasion of his visit to the kingdom. His Majesty welcomed the guest, hailing his efforts in the humanitarian field and in strengthening the values of tolerance. His Majesty the King affirmed his pride that the kingdom throughout its history has embraced all religions, doctrines and cultures which live as one united family as part of a society that is based on brotherhood and cohesion as a result of its people's belief in noble humanitarian principles and the values of coexistence. His Majesty the King reviewed with the guests the number of topics that contribute to promoting dialogue, religious tolerance, moderation and the rejection of extremism. His Majesty asserted the Kingdom's keenness to establish and strengthen the culture of rapprochement and coexistence between religions and cultures. He noted the vital role of the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence and its contributions in this regard in cooperation with this is Bahrain. For his part, Reverend Johnny Moore expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his indiscriminate appreciation and interest in followers of all religions, commending the kingdom's leading efforts in promoting the values of peace among people. The Supreme Council of Islamic Affairs, the SCIA, congratulated His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa on the Russian Natural Science Academy's first class Grand Star Medal conferred upon His Majesty in recognition of his tremendous role and keenness to develop the various scientific and technological fields and boosting the Bahraini Russian Federation friendly ties in all fields, including the coordination and cooperation in the field of space and research. The Council can congratulated His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa on his good health, wishing His Royal Highness the Premier lasting good health to carry on the leading the government's work to fulfill the citizens' aspirations and welfare and prosperity. The Islamic Affairs Council session was chaired by its President, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa. On the occasion of the National Guard's 22nd anniversary, the Council congratulated His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Spring Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, praising the tremendous efforts exerted by the National Guard's affiliates alongside the members in the military and security sectors in consolidating the nation and the people's security and stability, as well as maintaining the kingdom's gains. The Chairman briefed the Council members about the outcomes of his successful visit to Egypt and attending on behalf of His Majesty the inauguration of Egypt's Al Fatah Al Ali Mosque and Nativity Cathedral in the Egyptian new administrative capital. The Council hailed the leading role undertaken by Egypt in the Arab and Muslim world in all fields and Egypt demonstrating the plausible model of peace and coexistence. The Council launched a documentary book entitled The Supreme Council of Islamic Affairs Progressive March 1996-2018 which documents the Council's performance and accomplishments since it was established citing the tremendous role of the Council's late founding president, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid Al Khalifa. The Council meeting discussed the items on its agenda and reviewed and approved the report of the committee to support the students of Sharia sciences. The report endorsed the support of 48 Sharia postgraduate students, including 20 doctoral and 28 master's students. The Board of Trustees, uh, Chairman of the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence, Dr. Sheikh Khalid bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, received Reverend Johnny Moore. Sheikh Khalid underscored that the values of tolerance and peaceful coexistence in Bahrain are clearly embodied in the polit politics of the kingdom. He noted that the efforts of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and his noble goals of setting the values of coexistence and respecting one another on the global scale are evident of Bahrain's elevated status. As a, nash, as a nation that inherited love and peace as pillars that support stability among nations of different religions and ethnicities. Sheikh Khalid affirmed that the establishment of the King Hamad Global Center comes as a crowning of the efforts exerted towards setting a tolerance in addition to it being a declaration that the Kingdom of Bahrain is a model of coexistence. For his part, Reverend Johnny Moore expressed pleasure and appreciation for the Kingdom's systems, legislation, advanced policy 
policies, various religious edifices, as well as intellectual and ideological freedom, hailing the spirit of authenticity and love characterized by the people of Bahrain. He also emphasized the positive impression he formulated during his visit and hailed the kingdom for being a model of religion, tolerance and acceptance description of the Kingdom of Bahrain is that it is the Switzerland of religion. I mean, that, that's what this island is. And it isn't it now. It's been it for generations. You know, and that's what, makes it, that's what makes it unique. It's not that the, the kingdom is trying to be these things. It's, it's generations passed from one generation to the next. The Bahrain Declaration is an incredible document. It's a historic document, unlike any other document like it uh, produced in the region. And at the top of the Bahrain Declaration, there's a quote by uh, the king. And it says, ignorance is the enemy of peace. And what the extremists do is they, they take pieces of history and they try to turn them into ideology, to turn people against one another. But the fact is, in all of our religious traditions, you know, we, we have histories of coexistence, we have histories of mutual respect. I mean, when you, when you read the Quran or the Bible or the Hadith or, or Christian history, you know, sometimes, sometimes we forget that, that, that the weaponization of religion isn't true religion to begin with. And what, what has happened here and is increasingly happening around the region, and I believe because of what is unique here. You know, I, I think you know, pe people, Bahrain has demonstrated that this works. It's not only right, but it's, it's, it's good. And I think we have to draw back in our history and our traditions, you know, the best, the best of faith. And, uh, you know, Christians and Muslims and Jews and Hindus and Baha'i and you name it, uh, they have nothing to fear for one another. In fact, uh, because of our mutual adoration for God, we actually, to begin with, have more in common. And that's what we need to celebrate in the world. The right of anybody to believe what they want to believe, to choose what they believe, to be who they want to be. Electricity and Water Authority's Chief Executive Sheikh Nawaf bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa today affirmed that IWA is set to, to complete all technical aspects of an electronic system that allows citizens to claim refunds on the VAT paid on the consumption of electricity and water. Sheikh Nawaf noted that IWA's efforts are in line with His Majesty the King's instructions to review the mechanisms of applying the VAT during its trial period, in addition to royal directives issued in 2000 reducing the cost of domestic electricity from six to three fills and the introduction of government subsidies on citizens' primary residences in 2015. Sheikh Nawaf emphasized that 64% of Bahraini sub subscribers' electricity consumption does not exceed 3,000 units, which means that they are not affected by the implementation of VAT on electricity and water. He underlined that citizens must register through the Ministry of Labor and Social Development prior to claiming the refunds. Sheikh Nawaf concluded by highlighting that the unified VAT agreement approved by the Gulf Corporation Council does not exclude electricity and water from the 5% VAT charge. In response to His Majesty the King's instructions to review the mechanisms of applying the VAT during its trial period that takes into account citizens' needs, the Electricity and Water Affairs Authority, IWA, reviewed the mechanisms of applying the VAT on the supply of electricity and water services in coordination with the National Bureau for Taxation, the NBT. The discussion reviewed the mechanisms of applying VAT to ensure that eligible citizens are granted the subsidies they are entitled to in line with His Majesty to see the King's Royal Directives that reduce the electricity usage charge for domestic consumption from six to three fills and the introduction of government subsidies to citizens with one account in 2015. Citizens wishing to benefit from this scheme must register through the Ministry of Labor and Social Development's website, which will be announced later, and provide their personal number, the first account's electricity and water account number, smart card's expiry date, address, and the contact details. The VAT charge will be deposited through a prepayment process.
Information and e-government authority, the IGA chief executive Mohammed Ali Al-Qaid said that the first pilot phase of issuing a new identity card will be at present limited to Bahraini newborns with no additional charges. Al-Qaid also emphasized that such technological developments and technical revamps in the ID card features does not require current identity card holders to replace their cards with new ones. The previous identity card will continue to be issued until the launch of the second phase and according to the legally certified service charges. He also highlighted that valid ID cards will remain officially recognized in all public and private transactions up until their expiration date. al Qaeda highlighted that the launch of the new ID considered keeping abreast with the latest international technologies and in line with the international high standards of international civil aviation organization, the ICAO. The Embassy of India celebrated the Pravasi Bhartia Devas 2019 by organizing an event in its complex today, attended by the members of the Indian community who highlighted their happiness and appreciation in their second home, Bahrain. More on this report by Hiba Abdul Ghaffar. Relations between India and Bahrain go back generations, and the long standing ties are growing more and more every day. An event was held today to celebrate a special day for the Indian community, who now consider Bahrain home. It's the Privacy Bhartia Day. During his address to the community members, Ambassador of India highlighted the various schemes launched by the Government of India to connect with Indian expats and also thanked the Bahraini leadership for ensuring the well-being of Indians in Bahrain. Our two countries enjoy historical ties. It's not about a relationship which is, can be defined in the modern day diplomacy. It is very deep. It's a people to people level contact. The two countries have worked together and contributed to each other's growth and development for centuries together. The event included a classical dance performance and also included felicitation of winners of first round of second edition of Bharat Ko Jenny Quiz 2018-2019, which was conducted by the Ministry of External Affairs of India. That the Indian community is involved in every field in Bahrain. And Alhamdulillah, they are so happy that they don't find any other place more better than Bahrain. This is a fact. We are in Bahrain for more than 150 years. Talking about uh, Bahrain-India relationship, I think I need half an hour. I can't uh, finish it in a few minutes. But anyhow, let me try to briefly summarize. Uh, as I said, you know, we have been here for so many generations. We have, as the Excellency mentioned also, that we have a Hindu temple here since last 200 years. These small, small things, if you keep on adding the examples, Crown Prince visiting our homes uh, for uh, Bhatia community in Diwali since last seven years. If he does not come, his elder son or the younger son comes. I am living in Bahrain since 92. That means I have been living here for the last 26 years. I must say that I am living in one of the most beautiful country in the world. Uh, the relationship between India and uh, Bahrain dates back to Delmani, Delman, you know, civilization. A documentary titled India Boundless was also screened during the event, followed by a reception where cuisines of different parts of India were showcased. Reporting for Bahrain International, Mheva Abdul Ghaffar.